So in one of my live streams, one of my subscribers asked me what my toughest hurdle was as an electrician. Oh, being an electrician. Oh, what were the toughest hurdles? I mean, the exams, yeah? So being an electrician, the exams, I flew through all the exams as an electrician. Now, I failed one of the exams that was electrical testing, inspection and testing. So that had nothing to do with me being an electrician. Yeah? I became a fully qualified electrician and then I um, done the inspection and testing, right? So up until the electrician thing, that in, in inspection and testing, I passed all of the electrical exams. I had difficulty maybe doing some of the installation stuff, but ultimately, I'd say the most difficult thing, I'm not saying I experienced it, but it, it is, as I said to the girl Paris yesterday, who's from Tottenham, yeah, is um, getting the job, right? It is difficult, right? But that shouldn't deter you. Now, I don't know if I had amnesia or I completely missed the question because I started going off talking about exams and that. You know what my biggest challenge, my biggest hurdle was working as an electrician, working with people. I've got a hundred thousand stories to tell. But I'll just give you the best stories because if I spoke about all of them, this video would never end. But forget being an electrician. <laughs> Let's talk about when I was an apprentice. Let's talk about my first week at Holmes of Haringey as an apprentice. On my first day, I went into the office, Broadwater Farm, BWF. I'm sitting with my manager and he said, yeah, boom, you're going to be working with an electrician throughout your apprenticeship, obviously, isn't it? Some guy comes walking over, big tall guy, fat as well. Yeah, he's a lump, big teddy bear, but he's weak, he's meek, he's a pushover, he's timid. The way he's interacting with my manager, he shook of him. So I'm sitting there, I'm pre him, innit? I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. I ain't gonna have no problems with this guy. Huh. I got the impression that he was a weak individual, he was a pushover, he had no edge to him, innit? But that's how he conducted himself, but it's because he was shook of the manager, innit? So after my managers introduced me to him, boom, bam, boom, we've gone downstairs and jumped in the van. Remember, I'm thinking this guy's like a weak, meek, he's a pushover, whatever, innit? We jumped in the van. As soon as we got in the work van, it was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, he had a different side to him. Like, his tonality, his whole aura. Like, he spoke in a more aggressive manner. He weren't rude or nothing like that, but, like, you know, he had a substance to him at this point. So I'm like, raw. Like, how the man just switch just like that? Now, he ain't coming across rude or nothing like that, but his whole aura, demeanor just changed just like that. So I'm like, raw. So boom, we've gone to our first job. I remember Gladstone Avenue, Wood Green. And we've got out of the van and now obviously we've got tools and stuff that we need to carry in it. So we've looked at the job. All it was to do was change a light switch and a light. That's it. So we've gone to the van now, started taking out the tools and that. He's taken out his big heavy tool bag and his ladder and he's taken out a light and a light switch. Cool. Now, he said, yeah, can you grab the tool bag and the ladder? So I'm like, all right, cool. And he's carrying a switch and a light. Featherweight items. I'm walking down the road. I'm carrying this guy's big fucking bag and his ladder. And I'm thinking, nah, this ain't really fair. First of all, he's a lot bigger than me. Technically, he's stronger than me. Why am I carrying the heavy items? We should split the load, like... You know, he carries the steps, I carry a switch, and you know, I carry the tool bag and he carries the light or whatever, innit? You just split the load, innit? Make it a bit even, innit? But I thought, you know, it's my first day, innit? You know, fuck it, I allow it, innit? All right, so boom, so that was Monday, first day, next day, Tuesday, same thing again, Wednesday, same thing again. So I'm like, nah, I don't like this, innit? Yeah, boom. I've gone home on Wednesday, innit? Wednesday evening now, I'm eating my dinner at the dinner table, my stepfather's there, my mum's there. And my mum's close friends there, innit? So they're like, ah, oh, how's the job going, innit? Like, what's the apprenticeship saying, innit? So boom, I'm just telling them about it and that. Then after, I thought, you know what? Let me express my concerns, because I need a second opinion on this, innit? Yeah. So boom. So I told them the situation that I'm not happy that. A man's basically trying to make me his donkey or whatever, innit? 
I ain't no man's fucking mule or no man's slave or nothing like that, innit? So I expressed my concerns, whatever, innit? Boom. So right then and there, obviously my mum, being my mum, and obviously my mum's friend, she's also a mother, so obviously they're going to be on the defensive, you know, their maternal instincts kicked in and they said, no, nah, that's not right. How's a man taking a piss like that, innit? Yeah, no, nah, stick it on him, stick it on him, whatever, innit? But then my stepfather's jumped in and said, boom, at the end of the day, right, you're the apprentice, innit? Yeah? So you're quote-unquote dog's body, as they call it in construction, yeah? You basically have to do all the shit jobs. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, I hear that, like, maybe do all the shit jobs, but I ain't no one's slave, innit? Yeah, and I ain't having no one take advantage of me, innit? Yeah? So my mum and her friend was like, stick it on him, innit? And I was like, you know what? It has to be done, innit? So next morning, boom, we're driving to our first job. And I'm like, okay, I need to stick it on him before we even get out of the van, whatever. Innit? So we're driving now in the van. Obviously, he's the driver, I'm the passenger. We stop at a red light. I look to my right. And I turned to him and I said, from now on, you carry your own tools. He said, what? I had to Ross Clark repeat myself. From now on, you carry your own tools. He said, right, that's it. He spun the van around, you turn in the road, and then he hit oncoming traffic, you know. And we started heading towards one cafe that my manager was at. So boom, jumped out the van, cut the long story short. I said to my manager, listen, I'm not Donkey from Shrek. I'm Jelani Knight. I'm not having it. I'm not having a man take the piss and make me carry all his tools and that while he's carrying some featherweight items. So boom, imagine, this is my fourth day, you know. Fourth day on the job and I'm already falling out with man. From there, it was a downward spiral. I was just falling out with electrician after electrician after electrician. There was even one point where I had a fight with someone in my second week. So the following week, I boxed the man in his head. A man tried to throw a piece of wood at me and my work colleagues thinking it was funny. Going to a local altercation and that next thing you know. Man had to swipe the heat, man had to lace him one time. After that, man had a bad reputation on the firm. Whew. Imagine, that's my second week as well, you know. Man ain't even been there a fortnight. And man are falling out with man. Man are swinging on man. Madness. And just before I leave home to Harringay alone and go on to other stories. Me, I'm a man. When I go into new environments, and I don't try to fit in with no one. I don't care about being anyone's friend. I don't care about being accepted and fitting in. So when I went to Holmes Haringey, me, I'm a standoffish type of person anyway. So I just kicked to myself. And I found out years later, <laughs> people thought, well, what's, what's wrong with this youth? Because I was 19 at the time, like, what's wrong with this youth? Apparently, because I never wanted to talk to anyone, and I kept myself to myself, apparently the white people then thought I was racist, and the black people thought that I thought I was better than them. How stupid is that? They just didn't understand that. I Me, mean, I'm a man, I don't try and fit in and flex with no one. I just do my own thing. And imagine, imagine this. You know you can be dismissed. You can be fired because you don't get along with your work colleagues. This is a real fucking thing, you know. I'll show you. So if you've been watching me long enough, you will know say that I don't smoke. And I've had man in the past. I was sitting in the van with a man. And a man starts smoking in my presence. And I had to pull up the man and say, yo, do you mind not smoking in my presence whilst we're sitting in the van? But don't get it twisted though. I'm not rude about it, but I'll just let a man know, yo, I don't smoke. So do you mind not smoking in my presence? And instead of a man, whilst he's smoking, say, oh, sorry, brother. Well, I ain't gonna say sorry, brother, cause he's white, but oh, sorry, mate. And put the cigarette out, no. Nope. A man thinks he has the right to argue with me and tell me that, oh, he can smoke in the van. Blood, there's a fucking sign in the company vehicle that states, no smoking in this vehicle. And a man tries to come back with, oh, that sign only applies when the vehicle is on the move. If we're stationary, then I can smoke in the van. What the fuck you talking about? He really deserved a swipe for that.
I remember I jumped in one guy's van and he's smoking a cigarette and I said to him, do you mind? I don't smoke. But I do. That was the man's response, you know. I said, boy, shall I get out then? He said, it's up to you. I had to end up jumping out of the van. It's either that or I jump on him. So I had to end up jumping in my car and following his van, which I preferred anyway, because I don't like sitting in those nasty vans. Talking about sitting in vans with them man there. You cannot work with white man in the winter. You see in the winter, you see them white man there? They'll be driving a van with no heating on, you know. No, 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 no. I'm a black man. Turn that fucking heating on. So a man starts turning the heating up. So after a couple of minutes with the heating on, a man starts to get hot, you know. Watch my work, Collie. Oof. What one for this bitch? That's one major difference between us, man, and them white man there. Them man there can't handle the warmth. Not the heat, you know, the warmth. One little piece of temperature and them man there all sweating and itching and that. Another thing with them man there. They don't know how to take lunch breaks, you know. Go to the cafe in the morning, full English, mate. So when it comes time to stop for lunch, them man there don't plan on stopping. They just work true. Their excuse is, I've had a big breakfast, so I don't need to stop for lunch. Exactly. You do not need to stop for a lunch break. I'm a black man. I don't give a fuck if I've had a big breakfast. I need a big lunch too. Then yeah, I just disappeared to the local chicken shop. You think I'm not going to take a lunch break just because I had a big breakfast? I don't give a fuck. And there's certain times I've been on lunch breaks with them man there. And I'm sitting in the work van. And most lunch breaks are an hour, yeah? Boom. It's getting up to like the 40 minute, 45 minute mark. And they know say it's time to go back. And you can see they're restless because them man there don't like to sit down, you know. A lot of them man there got ADHD. <sighs> With black people, especially me, I don't give a fuck. You can pay me to sit down and do nothing. I enjoy my lunch breaks. Them man there, they, it's like they can't sit down. They're restless. They just need to be doing something. Their brain needs to be active. Me, I could just sit down there and chill and do nothing and get paid. Some of the people them that you meet. <sighs> I remember one time I was on one contract in Hackney. Driving through Stanford Hill with one of my work colleagues. He's the driver, I'm the passenger. Now, Stanford Hill, predominantly a Jewish area, innit? And I said to him, why have the Jewish schools, you know, like the children's schools, why do they have security guards outside all the time? Like, our schools, normal schools, every now and then we'll have police outside because, you know, it might be like some little foolish gang activity and that. But Jewish people are cool people, they just stick to their own, so ain't no gang business or nothing like that. He said to me, because there's certain people who victimise Jewish people, like there's certain people they will go and attack Jewish people and Jewish children for no reason. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I don't know how we got onto this subject, it was straight after. He said, yeah, but he's a big man, like my mum's age, 48 and that. He said, yeah, back in the day, me and my mates, we used to go around and beat up gay people. But what the fuck for? I just shook my head and I think to myself, why would you go out of your way to pick on a particular race of people, or a particular faith of people, or a particular sexuality of people, just because you don't like what they get involved with, what their practices is, what they believe so? Some of these lot, they're just not right in their head. Racism at work. Jesus Christ. I will go to the toilet and I'll be in the cubicle. Now, construction sites are full of men. So if I'm going to see graffiti, I'm expecting to see Spurs all day, F Arsenal, Chelsea are the best, whatever in it. I'm expecting to see that kind of graffiti. No, 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 no. You effing Romanian this, you Polish, black nigga, Indian. What? Like, you're in the toilet, but do your thing, fam. Yeah, why are you even got time to be putting graffiti on the fucking walls? I'm telling you, these man's attitude to non-indigenous people of the UK is disgusting. I'm in the canteen the other day. And I just overheard a conversation between some of the older man them. Big man, them man, they're all near 60 years old. It was probably a foreigner. You see that? Like, just, what do you mean probably a foreigner? Like, what the fuck does that mean, fam? Like, it, it, what does that mean it was probably a foreigner? See that kind of attitude there? It's disgusting, man. 
why a man have to talk like that for? Like, it's not my beef, innit? So there's no point in me saying anything because if I say something and a man respond in the wrong way and he try to go down the disrespectful route, I'm a swing on a man, innit? So I'm not even going to say that. It's got nothing to do with me. But I'd love to say to a man, explain that comment. I want to understand what that means. We mean it was probably a foreigner. Another thing you will see as well, I don't know what the fuck these man's problem is. Like, I don't know if they don't understand their sexuality or whatever, innit? But these men are obsessed with drawing pictures of man's hood. Everywhere. You go in the toilets, they just graffiti everywhere. They love to draw pictures of a man's bits. I don't know what I'm going for these men. Something wrong with these men. Do you think I've ever drawn a picture of that? Swear down, when these men watch porn, yeah, I know say it's to watch other men. It's not even to watch gal, you know. Certain men, they are nasty, you know. You know these men? You know they make jokes about being paedophiles, you know. They make jokes about being a kiddie fiddler or whatever, in it. Like, what the fuck is wrong with these people, man? I remember I was working with one older guy before. He was like 60 years old. My supervisor is in between our age, so he's like 45 years old or whatever, in it. My colleague who's 60 years old, we've gone to the office to see our supervisor, in it. My supervisor's turned to me and said in front of the guy, has he tried to touch you yet? This is the bullshit man has to deal with working with these people, you know. One time I was working with a man when I was an apprentice. It's me, another apprentice working with a mentor who's a fully qualified electrician. We're sitting in the calf. Some older electrician comes into the calf and says, oh, you've been lumbered with all the apprentices today. And the mentor says, yeah, I've got my bitches with me today. I said, what? Like, it was a joke, innit? But I don't take them things there as a joke. I'm a fucking Jamaican. And to be fair, actually, my colleague was a Jamaican, but he thought it was a joke. And maybe I'm just a different breed of Jamaican. I had to pull the guy outside. Don't do that, fam. Don't be calling me your bitch. I know it's a joke, but I don't like them things there. Earlier this week, I swear on my mother's life, this is not a joke, this is serious. I was in the canteen the other day, and these men were having a debate. I don't know how someone even came up with this suggestion and someone else was even entertaining it. Do you know what they were saying? I swear to God, this is not even a joke, yeah? This is not for entertainment, nothing like that. Obviously, everything I say is fucking true anyway, but the man they were debating whether they would rather sleep with their mum or their sister if they had to. Like, they were talking about, oh, which one would you pick? I'm like, but these are fucking mad. Like, I'm on the other side of the canteen, chilling, and I've just got my hand over my face. And these men are having a loud conversation. Everyone can hear what they're talking about. And there's like five or six of them joining in and laughing and that. And I'm just thinking to myself, black man would never have this conversation. Them man, there, there's something wrong with them, I swear to God. I remember one time I was at work though, I was a supervisor at one construction site and it was a, a silly error, it was just a mistake but the project manager was on rage and one of my team members, he left an electrically live cable exposed and hanging and it was an easy mistake to make and he said no, nope, I'm not letting him off, he needs to be fired and I had to go and fire one of my guys and he watches my channel, isn't it? So he knows, like, man didn't want to do it. It was so sad as well. Like, I even went home and made a fucking video about it as well. And I remember when my project manager said, you need to fire such and such. I was like, please, no. And he was like, you have to. You can't allow people doing that. I'm like, blood, it's a... Well, I didn't call him blood because he ain't black, but it's an easy mistake that someone could have made. He was like, I don't care. If you don't fire him, I'm going to fire him. So I remember I was standing in the hallway and I could see him in the distance and he's speaking to one of the other work colleagues, whatever, and he's having a laugh and a joke. And I just thought to myself, in about 10 seconds, he ain't gonna be smiling. So he's approached me and I said, you know, you're gonna have to go because you left an exposed cable. And it weren't even his fault. It was just a uh, an apartment that we went into or whatever, innit? And yeah, man, to this day, it still burns that I had to do that because it was unnecessary. But the project manager was just on rage and there was something wrong with him. But luckily, I moved construction sites and I was a supervisor on this next construction site. So I just brought him over. So 
I felt like I kind of repaired the damage or whatever in it. So yeah, man. it was sad though that I had to fire him because he was a good man, yeah, good electrician, good tester, and he was a decent person as well. He was cool. I obviously managed to have a conversation with him outside of work and that's so he's a cool brother, man. But there was just something wrong with the fucking project manager. The man was just on rage. One thing I hear about being an employee for a big organisation like Harringay Council is, blood, they're just in your fucking business, you know. Imagine me, I'm an electrician. I work at Harringay Council, Monday to Friday. What I do on the weekend is my Ross Clark business. I remember, I think it was like 014 or something like that, yeah, 2014. I registered an electrical company. Let's call it JY's Electrical. Somehow, then pussy was found out. And they had a problem with it. They were talking about, oh, you know, you can't register a limited company and that. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, obviously, I didn't say it, but I'm like, why is it an issue whether or not I've got a registered company or not? Like, what I do on the weekend is my business. They're just upping your business and that. This is why I don't like being an employee. And I'm telling you right now, if I was still at Harringay Council and I had this YouTube channel, I would be gone within a heartbeat. As soon as HR set eyes upon the channel, I'm gone. They're not even, oh, put it on private. Nope, gone. Content too explicit. You're talking a certain way and you work for the council, you represent the council. Nope, you're gone. You see, like this YouTube thing, I kind of mark myself out, but it don't even matter because I'm not planning to be an employee for the rest of my life. But there's no way, like, imagine me trying to get a professional job as a lawyer or something like that with my content no way managers supervisors project directors i can't stand dealing with some of these people and i can't stand even just observe them dealing with other people the thing i hate about the attitude of some of these supervisors project managers and directors and that, they feel like they can speak to the people underneath them however they want I've got a serious problem with that because they don't talk to their superiors like that. So why do you think it's acceptable to talk to someone who is quote unquote inferior to you in the hierarchy in the workplace? It's a big disrespect. They know what they're doing and most people let them get away with me. I don't let no one get away with nothing like that. I've had managers say, oh, there was one time to be fair, I was talking out a turn and I shouted and the guy was like, shut up. I went fucking mad. Listen. <laughs> he's lucky, yeah, he weren't, like, saying that to my face, I would have boxed him, I went mad, who the fuck are you talking to, who's that, bruv, veins popping out my neck and that, one of the girls at work was like, Jay, calm down, like, aren't you afraid you're going to lose my job, I don't give a fuck if I lose my job, I need a good night's rest, I'm not having a man tell me, shut up in the office, out on the street, I'll knock you out for them talk there, so how are you going <laughs> to, yeah, I ain't having a man talk to me like that, and then funny enough, at that workplace, but on a different construction site working for the same company, I did get fired because one of the managers was trying to talk smack and I told him to shut his mouth or whatever. He's lucky I tell him to shut his mouth, I'll kick him in his head. Like even certain times I would just be out, out and about. I'll be in like Nando's or whatever, innit? And I just hear the manager talking to the employees, like there's some dick and I'm thinking, you you wanna talk to your fucking your your manager like that. So why are you talking to people who are inferior to you like that? Like when I was supervisor, I never talked to no one like their shit. Obviously, there's some people that they just do dumb stuff or whatever, innit? Yeah, but you just deal with them accordingly. And obviously, we I get it. We're human beings and that. And sometimes we lose our temper, we get frustrated or whatever, innit? Yeah, but some of these people, they just feel like, no, you are inferior to me because I'm above you. So I talk to you any way I want. Boy, they need to be careful with me if that's their attitude. But don't get it twisted, though. It's not just managers that test you, you know? People who are underneath you, like, you could be a supervisor and one of the employees test you. I had it. I had to dash a man on the fucking table. A man tried to square up to me in the office. Try to bring some street thing to me. Are you mad? Do you not? This guy don't know who man is, fam. To be trying to bring that street thing to me at work, thinking that that's going to intimidate, man. Boy, he was in for a fucking surprise, boy. I blacked out. Next thing you know, I had this fucking you on the table with one hand, you know. I'm one of the streetest guys that I know, or <laughs> well, at least I was. So there's no way a man could try to bring that to me at work. Are you mad? I'll relapse. And before I go, one of the main problems I have at work 
I'm always going to have an issue with the way people speak to me. I don't know if it's because I'm black or it's just because of me. But I'm a man. If you don't talk to me properly, we're going to have a fucking problem. I remember one time I was at one workplace and one of the coordinators called me up. And I hadn't spoken to her for that day. I not even know the girl like that. She called me up around about 12 o'clock. How long are you going to be on your lunch break for? Who the fuck you talking to? I, I turned into the exorcist, you know. I turned into a fucking madman like me. I've got a mad temper, you know. And she felt the full force of it. Some dickhead manager that I don't know tried to jump on the phone and try to play Superman and rescue the damsel in distress, telling me about who he is. And I blasted his rascal class as well. The next day I got called into the office and I got fired. I was only at that job for four weeks. Stay wise.